The Spotlight. I'm Susie Daphnis. I'm the CEO of Her Business. And every Monday morning, I get the wonderful opportunity to introduce you to one of our incredible Her Business Network members. Now, we're a community of women who are growing six and seven figure businesses. And we come from all sorts of industries. And some of us are running businesses online, some are running businesses offline, some sell products, some sell services. But what we've got in common is that we're all business owners. So we know what it's like to be creating our own futures, to creating and selling products and services, to doing marketing, to developing systems, to bringing on board team members, all those fun things. And in these Monday interviews, you get behind the scenes of one of the member businesses. And you also get along the way a little bit of an insight into some coaching and some strategies that you can use in your own business. And so I'm going to dive right in. Um, This is something we do to elevate our members, give them a bit of a profile, but also for you as you're watching to be able to learn from their own experiences. So my guest today is Jackie Short of the Sydney Centre for Creative Change, and she helps counsellors who are struggling to engage children in therapy by delivering practical online skills training courses. She'll tell us a little more about that. And she's had this business for 20 years. So one of our established business owners, let's go ahead and bring her on. Hey, hey, how are you? Hi, Susie. So lovely to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to have you here. I said a little bit about what you do and what you've been developing over the last 20 years, but tell us more specifically uh, what your business does. Absolutely. I do help counsellors, particularly those who are struggling to engage children in therapy by delivering practical online skills training courses in art, play, drama, sand play, and storytelling therapies delivered by industry experts. Some children really don't want to come to counselling, particularly when it's online, and finding these ways more creatively to help them express and explore can be really, really helpful to have the children wanting to come to therapy and also helping counsellors who are just really not knowing what to do. I love this. I love, firstly, the work that you're doing. That is so important. When we hear about the people that you're helping, which is the children, they're not actually your idle client. Like inside of her business, we talk about finding more of your idle clients. So there's kind of a middle person. Is that the counsellors? That's exactly right. So I'm not doing direct work with children in my business, even though I do some of that on the side. Most of my work is really in this training organisation, supporting those people who are supporting children. So most of our clients would be counsellors and psychologists and social workers who work directly with children and young people. Now, you were telling me just before we came online that your business used to be a little bit online, but mostly offline. Before we dive into the rest of the questions that um, I want to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about how things have changed for you over the last 12 months as you started to adopt more online as part of your the way that you deliver your results? Absolutely. So in March last year, we had courses running or scheduled to run around Australia. We were running courses in every state and we were running numerous types of courses, numerous duration of courses with a range of different presenters. We've got about 10 people on our training team and we were super excited to go. We had to completely abandon all of that and switch everything to online. We had a small number of webinars that we're already delivering. So we already had a platform for that, which was great. And we had a process to take payments and to manage that. But switching everything from the in-person to the online was a bit of a challenge, but it's meant a great growth in opportunities in terms of who we can reach, how people can access our services. And there's been a lot of tweaking and developing over the course of that year to get a product that's not exactly the same as online because, as we know, we can't do some of the same things. And yet I'd be totally surprised what we have been able to deliver even though we're not in person. I love that and I love one that you made that move because it's like when you expand something, it never goes back to its original size. And so even though you might start to adopt offline trainings again when that opportunity is available, your capacity as an organisation has grown. Um, And for that, I'm so excited for you because it will allow you to help so many more people in so many more different places Um, and have your training team, which firstly, I I love team, as you might have heard me speak about. And as we grow our businesses, we definitely want to be empowering our team members. And so for you, it's also probably been a learning curve for them as well to be able to adapt to that. So I just want to congratulate you because like I said, it's not only good for business right now, but it's good for you creating a more sustainable business in the long term. And now we're going to talk about some of this. Sorry, go ahead. I I just want to say something about the training team. We had people who were already delivering online who were up and ready to go. And we had other trainers 
who weren't even comfortable with PowerPoint presentations, let alone wow. Zoom. Yeah, we, we had one trainer who is fantastic in person, but she's used to sitting in a big group and, and just talking and doing interactive exercises. So she said, uh, online, that's just, I, I'm never going to do it. I'm sorry. I'll just wait until we're out of the pandemic. And mm. now she's she doesn't want to use the Zoom whiteboard. So she's had her husband install a real whiteboard at the back of her <laughs> and she still stands up and works on it. But she's completely independent. <laughs> she's doing breakout rooms. She said to me, you know, I'm never going to do face-to-face training again. So she's done a complete Oh, my gosh, piece. So really? I was just hand-holding her, saying, you don't have to do anything to start with, giving her lots of skills training, lots of support, putting her in lots of things that to give her an experience of what it could be, and it's just been phenomenal what she's been able to deliver. So I'm so proud of her, and I'm so proud Isn't of our Isn't that fantastic? She's had broken through these barriers. And any time we're forced to change, you know, we can have that resistance, and especially if it looks like, you know, uh, we won't look as smart or as competent, we may not get the result we want. It's a, it's a real physical feeling of fear around moving into that unknown. And I know uh, someone who has a school where they have trainers as well, and they similarly had a couple of people who said, I'm just going to wait for it to come back the truth is it hasn't come back for them and so that person is now either going to adapt or not have the work and so kudos to her that is a great story now I know you've got some advice that you find yourself giving your clients that you're going to be sharing with us uh, today so why don't we kick into that what are some things that you find yourself giving uh, and for those of you listening whether you're in counseling or therapy or not just listen out for what could be applicable to your business go ahead please. I think one of the challenges that people find when they look at our website is to know what training to do. And so I would get at least one or two calls a day saying, I'm a counsellor and I work with kids and I want some help and I don't know, you know, which course to do. I don't know where to study from now. And so one of my challenges and one of my opportunities to support my clients is to help them identify their ideal clients and who they're currently working Mm. with. We have so many different courses and there's no point investing in something that's not going to be in their best interest. So I ask them to think of three things. The first thing I ask them to think about is who they're currently working with. So what is the nature of the child that they might have in front of them or online that they're supporting? What's the age of that child? What are the presentations? What are the expectations of those people who are bringing them in? So to be really clear about who they are exactly and what their and people around them's needs might be in the work that you're doing. So you can really kind of hone your skill development in the best possible way. So that's number one. Not only who who your client is now, but who ideally you'd like your client to be in the next five years, particularly if you're investing in a bigger course. The second thing I'd ask our clients to think about in terms of what is going to be best for their skill development is what context they're working in. So certainly somebody working in a hospital would be having different training and support needs Mm -hmm. than someone working in private practice, someone working in a non-government organisation, someone working in somebody else's business. So to be really clear about the context of work and what the expectations or the needs might be of the context as well as your client. And the third thing I ask people to think about is what are your values and your beliefs around change, because that's also going to dictate whether you do mm. a short course that's about, you know, if you're working as a school counsellor and you really believe people need strategies and advice and support, that's great, we've got a course for you. And if you believe that people have particularly experienced trauma or some really adverse situation, they might need an investment in some longer term, deeper sort of process. And that's your belief around change, that you need that, you know, that, that much deeper kind of support going forward. So being clear about who your client is exactly, what context they're Mm -hmm. operating in and you're operating in, and then what your needs uh, are around your values and belief around change as well. So I think if people can get clear around that, then they can make better decisions about what sort of training and support they need in developing their careers and their work as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Very, very, uh, very specific and lots of clarity in the work that you do. And that comes from, you know, having done this for so many years. One of the things that I like to do in these interviews is also turn the attention to you as a business owner. And so you've been in business for 20 years. And um, leading up to today, I said to you, what are some of the things that might be a challenge or a frustration for you? And you said that sometimes you, like me, like many of us, have trouble switching off from work. Can you tell us a little more about that? I think managing so much of the business myself 
has meant a great amount of responsibility. And Mm -hmm. I often think if I got sick or something happened to me, that things might just fall over. So Mm -hmm. I'm very aware that um, while I have a few people doing a few different things to help me really wonderfully in the background, a lot of it does hinge on me doing certain things in order to orchestrate other things happening. And so what I'm wanting to do more and more is to systematise some of that and to be really clear with different people who could take over some of that should I need to be away or ideally one day want to be away somewhere on a holiday um, where I don't need to check in or maybe it's just briefly checking in but I don't need to be doing 10 things in order to make, you know, the training happen or the the marketing to happen or the the systems to kind of roll over. So I think that that feeling of indispensability which is actually just in my head. It doesn't actually have to be part of the business but I, I need and one of the things that I've valued about being in her business is that opportunity to step back and to sort of think about where am I on the, in the whole business side of it and where do I want to be and what can make that happen in terms of setting up other people responsible for different things. So I think that that feeling it's of so overwhelm, I do it myself, is like really so hard sometimes. It's very difficult and I know having been there, it's like I often have my fingers in way too many pies when I don't need to. And when we're growing a team, there's a couple of ways to think about it, Jackie. One is the team that are delivering uh, the the training, right? They have a very specific role and you can kind of justify getting that sort of support. But can you also have support that is support for you, support to be the middle person or to take some of the things off your plate? Because as we're looking at building these six, seven-figure businesses and being able to take a little bit of time off or to have to not have to work on a Sunday if you don't need to or to not have to do the 10 things before someone else can do something. It can be easy to say, well, that's a particular function that is, you know, going to help the business grow so I can allocate resources. But what resources might you need to free yourself up more? Because that is a really precarious position to be in, that if you did get unwell, which, you know, obviously we hope you don't, then we don't want it all come coming down like a house of cards. And so when we start to put in place people with specific roles that can um, operate independently from us, we're really allowing ourselves to step out of the solopreneur role into the micropreneur role and inside of her business for those of you who are watching who might not be familiar the solopreneur does have all the responsibility on their shoulders and maybe they have some people assisting them but they are the business and when you're not working the business doesn't work when you move to a micropreneur business and you do start to systemize and I'll say more about that you start to have some longer term plans you have people in place that have their own roles you have a use of technology that allows you to be leveraged, um, whether that's batch creating or automating or whatever it is that technology can allow you to do, you start to build a very different sort of business, a far more sustainable kind of business. Now, on systemization, what I want to say is that I remember a time where I had four receptionists hired and leaving in a period of time. And when I look back, I thought, what is going on? What is up with this? We're a good organization. And what was happening was we didn't have sufficient systems for that person to be onboarded, to really understand their role, to produce a result. Now, that's a little bit different to what you're saying. But when we have systems in place, it really takes the pressure off. Now, the good news for you, Jackie, is um, because every single month inside of the Her Business Network, we focus on a different, what we call growth zones. These are areas of business that every successful business has working for them. Next month is all about systems and systemization. So we'll be going to be providing our members with a whole lot of resources to be able to put that infrastructure in place that takes you out of the day-to-day. Systems set you free, one of my mentors once said. And so we do want to put in place those systems. And sometimes those systems are having a person in a role and sometimes it's about the technology or other things. But it's overwhelming. It causes burnout. It has us lose the love of our business when we feel like we are so tied to the business that um you know we can't we it won't operate without us it's exhausting it certainly has been it's not theory is it no no so my goal for you is to really uh lean into that in the next month as we're working on systems to really look at, well, how do I switch off? And maybe switching off just means switching off this much for the first month. And then the next month, it's a little more. It's just having that intention and having some support and structure and um, accountability to start to put some of that in place. So I'm excited about working uh, on that with you and the rest of the Her Business Network members. Fantastic. Uh, Now, you've been a member probably at least a year now. I don't know exactly. Yeah. So tell us what problem 
um, does being part of the Her Business Network solve for you and your business as a business owner? Many problems it helps solve, but I think the number one <laughs> is um, the feeling of professional isolation that I can have. Um, I've got lots of friends and I've got lots of professional colleagues, but I think there's something unique about being running a business that it's hard to necessarily share with a lot of people. And I really love um, the monthly connections in with the different events, the special events. I love being part of the think tank that you had last week. That was fantastic. Okay. Being in a small group and being inspired by different women coming in with very different angles on their business. And I really love that not everybody is in my industry. In fact, I love it better mm. that they're not because I get really mm. fresh ideas about ways of doing things that are completely outside the other professional networks that I have in my industry. So I really love being in groups with people who are, who might be you know, having a hairdressing business or having an accounting business or having a business business. I always learn something from everybody. And I think the more diversity is, the more I do learn because I'm not, it's not about the content it's about the processes that I really learned from. In in my goals group last week, there was a, got a beautiful woman in there who's an accountant and she's won all these great awards and she was up till 3 a.m. working on her business last week, which makes me all teary when I think about it because she's so committed to her people. And, you know, that's someone who's really kind of close to my heart, someone who, not that I want to be up at 3 a.m. doing my work as much as possible, but someone who really values the work that they do and is prepared mm. to go and above and beyond. So to be in small and larger networks like this with caring women who really have, you know, their business at heart but their clients at heart, I think is really inspiring mm. for me. So I love that. And I love that I've got through the, the personal contacts but also through the content that I've learned, courage, confidence and know-how develop mm. and scale my business in the last 12 months. It's really been phenomenal and I really appreciate all that I've learned about marketing, about systems, even about self-care, how I can do all of that better to, to have a more sustainable business, to be able to reach and support my clients who do such valuable work at the coalface for yes. the most vulnerable people in our community. So I just feel that's phenomenal. Thank you. And I love what you said there. For you to be able to serve your audience, it really starts with self service. And by that, I mean giving yourself the accountability, the support, the knowledge, feeding you so that you can in turn, because we can't, if we're a deflated balloon and we're depleted, it's hard for us to give our best selves to our customers. And in your case, to the people who, as you said, support, I get goosebumps just talking about it, the most vulnerable. And so fueling yourself, giving yourself that accountability, that support through your goals group, the nurturing that, you know, you make available to yourself through the connections that you make in the network. I just want to acknowledge you and thank you uh, for what you said. I wanted to call out because Sue Ann is here watching and she said, great interview, ladies. Love the discussion on moving from in-person to online and also the discussion on team and letting go. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here uh, and watching. And if you are here and you have any questions, uh, do do uh, let us know. Um, all righty. So a uh, couple of things. Let us, uh, I've got a website here that I want to put up because I do want people to go ahead and learn more about what you do. Tell us about the products and services that you offer. We kind of got a little bit of an inkling with the work that you're doing with training and mm -hmm. trainers, but tell us a little more so that those who might have a child that needs therapy or might want to get in contact, um, tell us what it is that you offer and how we can um, make those things um, available to us. So I guess my number one client is really <clears throat> uh, people who are working directly in the counselling space. So it's counsellors, psychologists, social workers who are right. doing mostly work with children but also with adults who want to find ways and get training online that provides methods that go deeper than words. So creative therapy is a great passion of mine. I've worked as a counselling psychologist and play therapist for over 20 years in Sydney. And when I started working with children, I realised very quickly that talk-based therapy was really not going to cut it. The very first child client I ever had ran out of the room and I never saw him again. And it was such a great realisation that even though I was a qualified counsellor, uh, counsellor and psychologist, I didn't have the skills in working specifically with children. I think it's a real niche mm. area. And I think there's a lot of people who graduate super confident that they can do counselling and they might with adults, but working with children is very, very different. And working with particular traumatic presentations, working with people maybe from a non-English speaking background, where language might be a bit of a difficult right. way to express difficult mm. things. I think finding creative ways through 
expressing ourselves in ways predominantly that aren't about talking. We do talk, but it's it's not the focus. Provides ways of going deeper and more sustain, uh, allowing for more sustaining change. So that's what I'm super excited about offering through a range of different online uh, events that we have. So we have short courses, we have 90, we have a range of 90 minute webinars, okay. three to six hour training courses, right up to a certificate course, which is a 200 hour graduate certificate in play and art therapy. But that's specifically for mental health professionals. What we have additionally, and what I've started during the pandemic is a free webinar series called Holding Space for self and others. And this is designed to be a self-care opportunity for those working in challenging roles, mostly helping professionals, but we have teachers, we have lots of other people who are feeling exhausted and burned out, coming along to those for free, getting ideas about how they can sustain themselves and find practical ways to also help the communities that are around them. And that's been phenomenal success. We've had up to 100 mental health professionals and others coming along to those each month. And we've got a recording bank of all of those that people can access. Fantastic. And, uh, and for those needing it can get a professional development certificate as well. And I wanted to shout out a few people in the network who've put their hands up to um, to come and help us in the niche areas that they run that fit with our community. And uh, I know Sue-Ann Higgins is here and she did a wonderful presentation for us on brain facts mm -hmm. that help you communicate like a professional. And that was an incredibly popular one and it's been popular with the on-demand access as well. Heather Joy Campbell did a wonderful presentation on laughter yoga for us as well, which was also really popular. And I know many people have followed her up after doing that also, which is wonderful. And Alison Hartman, also in the network is doing one for us next month on key focus areas for website success. And that's obviously one that might appeal to people beyond the mental health network. So mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to enrol for that, there's still a few spaces left. So um, yeah, Wonderful. so it's- And is that at this address here that we've got here below? Yeah, yep. it's part okay. of free, free, if you just go to uh, webinars and the first in the drop down menu is holding space for self and others. So yeah, please feel free to access that if you think it might be a benefit. Thank you so much. And I love that you're collaborating with other members of the network. That is one of, again, one of the powers of being in a community of like-minded women. Plus, of course, we have a culture of collaboration. But I love that you have made those connections and that you're doing that, like they're coming into your community and serving your people better, allowing you to grow your business. And similarly, I'm sure that you are also stepping in and providing the support that they might need to grow their businesses. So it just warms my heart when I see those member-to-member -member connections. It is one of the powers because while we provide amazing training and access to experts and we facilitate a lot, a lot of the goal that is inside of this community are the connections that we help facilitate and what you do with those connections. So I'm very, very excited for you. Um, before we go, uh, and we will put this link, if you're watching here, we're going to post this link here below um, when we finish up here. What would you like to leave us with? I think one of the most important things at this challenging time for all of us is uh, the focus of this month in her business which is about self-care and is really about taking stock of one's own needs in order to be able to do the best possible job that we can for whatever communities that we are working with to really making sure that our cup is more than half full because we can't mm drink from an empty cup and uh, and there's no point putting on oxygen masks on everybody else if we can't breathe. So really, really making sure that we're taking care of ourselves in whatever small or longer ways, more substantial ways that we need to. We're just about in Sydney to move out of lockdown and people are super excited. And I think it's, you know, any time of transition, it's both a wonderful opportunity and also a bit of a risky or scary time. So you know, really kind of taking stock of one's own needs and figuring out what is it, not that I, I want right now, but what is it that I need right now? And really trying to tune in and take care of self in, in the best ways possible. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for being my guest today, Jackie. Pleasure. Thank you. Lovely to be here, Susie. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I absolutely love what Jackie was just saying there about self-care because it really, if our cup is not full, it's very hard for us to feel generous with others. And what Jackie was referring to is that this month inside of the Her Business Network, our focus is on what we call the you growth zone. So our growth zones are areas of business that any successful business has working for them. And sometimes they're external growth zones like planning and marketing and um, money and technology. 
And sometimes we focus in on what I think is the most important growth zone, and that is the one we call you. And that is about self-care, which doesn't just look like going to a spa if you could get into one. It's also about feeding our mind. It's about taking time to uh, be generous with ourselves. It's about saying no to things that drain us. It's about saying no to opportunities that are really just sidetracking us from our main goals. And so that's what we're studying this month inside of her business. Next month, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking more about systems, uh, another core part of a leverageable business, because we're really about helping women grow six and seven figure businesses where they are not in, they're in control of the business, the business isn't controlling them. Now, the doors to the Her Business Network are usually closed because we're working inside to support our members to grow their businesses. But we will open the doors just for three, maybe four days in November. So if you would like an invitation to join us when we do open, um, and it is by invitation, then all you need to do is head on over to herbusinessnetwork.com. I've put that link here below, herbusinessnetwork.com, and it'll ask you, do you want an invitation to join the Her Business Network? You just provide your first name and email address, and then a little bit before we open those doors, we will send you an exclusive invitation uh, to join us. And it's a really good way to get a head start on the new year because as we move into the last quarter of the year not only are we talking systems but we're also talking about planning and setting our plans for the new year and even diving into a three-month program that's going to allow you to get the core foundations in place and help you really reset with setting your vision and really getting your messaging down and really preparing to have your best year ever so that's what's coming up herbusinessnetwork.com thanks again to Jackie for being my guest here today you'll find more uh information about her if you just look wherever you're watching this just watch out for her uh website address and do go ahead and look at the program she has available the one about holding the space sounds just perfect i'm going to check that one out have a great week i'll speak to you soon bye for now